The fact that Islam makes sense and it fits human nature and it provides answers, that should be reason enough for us to at least look into Islam and see what it has to say about human beings, human life, our existence and where we're going, right? We need to not be reductionist in our approach and reduce everything down to empiricism, what's observable, because there's much more to life than that, right? Science is amoral. Science does not give you good or bad, right or wrong. It, it just, and, and this is the problem I have with John's position, which is that he wants to reduce everything down to science. Science is the only way to truth. Anything beyond this, well, you can't believe in it, you can't acknowledge it, and that's problematic, right? That, that is highly problematic, and as human beings, I, and I would even say most atheists would disagree with John's outlook in regards to the roots of knowledge, etc. So, to conclude, I thank you guys for coming out today, I thank you guys for participating, uh, which you're gonna now, we're gonna participate with you with your Q&A, but I thank you guys for being patient with us and, and hearing us out today, and I would really recommend you guys to do two things. One, if you haven't already and you're someone seeking and searching to look into Islam, because the message, message of Islam is very simple and very beautiful, that there is a creator, there is one all-powerful creator who created us, and humanity and everything else that exists, and he created us for no other reason except to know him and to worship him. And this type of worship, when you submit to your creator and you worship him alone, this frees you from all types of slavery. Because the false notion we have as human beings is that we are free, or we want to be free, but as soon as you're born in this reality, no one is free. Everyone is submitting to something or the other. Everyone is a slave of something or the other. There's something that we want to know, and love and obey the most. That is the thing we are submitting to. It could be in the form of money, materialism, power, whatever else it may be. But Islam gives you the option and the most intelligent option which is choose your slavery. Who do you want to be a slave to? Who do you want to submit to? Created things? Material things? People? Ideologies? Yourself? Or do you want to be a slave to the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that created everything? And in doing so, this elevates the human being and frees him from these ephemeral shackles. Right? And I conclude on a very beautiful uh, line of poetry by Iqbal, a famous poet from the East, and he said something very profound. He said, this one prostration that you find so difficult and so heavy on you to prostrate your head on the ground to the creator of the heavens and the earth, this will free you from a thousand prostrations. And it's something for us to really think about. Thank you guys for listening.